Whether it's the apocalypse or the feed store is just too expensive for you, here is exactly how you're going to feed your chickens without the feed store. In this video, we're going to talk about how much feed your chickens need, how much feed cost, how many eggs you're going to get per chicken, how much meat you can expect per chicken, some simple chicken nutrition, which feeds to grow, how much space to grow those feeds, and the cost to grow your own grains. First things first, the average laying hen needs about a half cup of food per day. A half cup is roughly equal to 300 calories. You can give her a half cup a day or you can give her a quarter cup in the morning and a quarter cup in the evening. If you prefer scales over measuring cups, that's okay. That is a quarter of a pound, which would be an eighth of a pound morning and an eighth of a pound in the evening. So over the course of a year, each hen is going to eat just over 90 pounds which is two 50 pound feed sacks. So for a flock of 10, that's gonna be closer to 19 bags. At $20 a bag, that's 380 a year. At 10 a bag, it's 190 a year. And at 30 a bag, it's $570 a year. In exchange for all that feed, you're gonna get between 150 and 330 eggs per year. How many eggs you get is heavily dependent on which breeds you choose to raise. Silkies and Polish chickens may only lay 100 eggs a year, while your Golden Comets could lay up to 360 eggs a year. So on the low end, you could get somewhere between 1,300 eggs, and on the high end, you could get somewhere around 3,200 eggs. Two dozen eggs a week is about 288 calories a day, while five dozen eggs a week is closer to 700 calories per day. But what about raising chickens for meat? Dual purpose heritage breed chickens will usually weigh 4 to 10 pounds as a full grown adult and they are ready for you to harvest at 5 to 6 months old. There are larger breeds that weigh 13 to 15 pounds but they take close to a full year to get to that size and they also have a lot more bones. I'm specifying heritage breeds because Cornish Cross exists and unless you grew up on a farm that's probably what you've exclusively eaten your whole life. Cornish Crosses are what is in most grocery stores, restaurants, and even homesteads. They're not GMO with any crazy hormones, injections, or antibiotics. They're just the result of very specific breeding. You have to keep 14 specific flocks away from each other and then crossbreed them selectively to end up getting your Cornish cross. And these crosses are hatchery secrets, so it's not even like most homesteaders know how to do this, myself included. Cornish crosses are popular for very good reason. They are ready in half the time while eating half as much and being twice as heavy with twice as much meat. They've been selectively bred for larger breast sizes and they are 60 to 70% meat compared to your normal heritage breed, which is 40 to 60 percent meat. They give you three to eight pounds of meat in six to ten weeks, which is a huge difference from one to five pounds ready in five to six months for a heritage breed chicken. There really is no comparison between the two, but if the feed store is down, then you're probably not going to be able to get any chickens from the hatchery, so you're going to be out of luck for the Cornish crosses. Now before I get into this, there are some really good ways you can reduce your feed needs, starting with number one, which is fermenting your chicken feed. It's basically just soaking your chicken feed for a couple days. You can take a screenshot now for a quick reference guide. And now I'm gonna get into the details of fermenting your feed. Fermenting chicken feed kind of breaks it down so it's easier for your chickens to digest. So basically more of your feed actually gets absorbed by the chicken rather than just passing through them. It increases beneficial bacteria, so good gut health. It also alters the smell and taste, so your chickens will probably like it more. Mine definitely do. When I first started giving fermented feed, my chickens were actually eating between a half and a full cup each. And that was because they just really liked it. As they continued eating it and they realized this wasn't going to go away, they started eating less and less. And now I'm starting to see that reflected in my feed bill, which is kind of nice. I feed them half of it in the morning and half of it in the evening. I don't pour a lot of the water off because that helps my chickens get more into their bodies, which is really nice in the winter. Fermented feed is more likely to mold, so keep an eye on that. Basically feed your chickens and then come back in a couple hours. And if there's still feed left over, reduce the amount that you give them next time. I prefer to give my chickens slightly more feed in the morning rather than the evening because it's easier to monitor and add more as needed. I do not like to leave excess feed in their coop overnight because that draws in pests and predators which can be a real problem. Taking the time to ferment will cut down your feed usage by 40 to 50 percent which is awesome. Your second option is to pasture raise your chickens. Pasture or free ranging comes with a ton of benefits but it also has some pretty big drawbacks. The main benefit is your chickens can go get their feed on their own. I've had chickens for a total of about eight years and I have to say I haven't really noticed a big decrease in their feed intake. They seem to eat a lot in the morning, go out and free range, and then come back in at night and eat some more. My guess is that my chickens only eat about 10% less when they're free ranging. If you've had a different experience with your flock, please share that in the comments because that fascinates me to no end. Pasture time is definitely really good for your chickens' mental health. If you live somewhere that gets a lot of snow like I do, they're not going to have many options for foraging anyway. The downside is your entire flock can be wiped out in a matter of minutes. All it takes is a few bored dogs and your chickens are gone. Your next option is to feed table scraps, but unfortunately if the feed store is inaccessible to you, probably the supermarket is too. And if that's the case, you're going to want to save as much food for your family as you can and not waste that on your chickens. Scraps are great for now, but they probably won't be available later. 
Okay, but chickens used to fend for themselves, so why can't we just do that now? All modern chickens were developed from the red jungle fowl. We can still find these in the wild today. If you watch this bird for any amount of time, it will be immediately clear why that is not a good option anymore. They weigh a pound, so they're only gonna have like a third of a pound of meat on them. They always have food available to them and it's warm, so they're not spending any of their precious energy trying to stay warm. Now, if you do live somewhere that is pretty tropical, then you probably can let your chickens do more of the work themselves. And they only lay eggs for a couple weeks out of the year. Though that approach gets you almost no meat and no eggs. Okay, but what about that stretch of history when our great grandparents were farming and those colonial times before them? They had domestic chickens that were intentionally bred to get larger, lay more eggs, and have more meat on them. And the way that happened was by pouring the feed to them. In colonial times, you could expect about 200 eggs per chicken per year. And our great-grandparents and grandparents were getting closer to 300, and now we can get 330 to 360. That's all because we've been giving better nutrition to our chickens over the years. And now they require and expect that. And just in case it's not really clear, no, there weren't as many feed stores back then, but most people either farmed or lived near a farm and all these grains were sourced locally. Now some of your favorite older farmers might tell you about how they never fed their chickens, and they probably didn't. But the missing link there is that they had hogs and cattle and working horses who were always dropping little bits of grain on the ground and there was plenty of manure for those chickens to sift through so they absolutely never went hungry. They may not have been directly feeding their flock, but their chickens were very well fed with good nutritious food. And let's not forget that those crop fields and backyard gardens had a ton of waste and extra scraps left over for the chickens. Lastly, it's a grim fact, but a lot of people and their animals did not make it through the winter. I won't drag you along on this crazy tangent, but I have developed an affinity for looking through old journals and diaries that were kept between the 1600s and late 1800s, but a ton of them, and especially the women's journals, agonize over the feed situation and a lot of them worry over the animals. In the women's journals, there's more of a concern about if the animals have enough to eat, the men's journals don't really voice these concerns, but they do talk about livestock dying. A lot of the time these animals would die from being sick, but the real underlying issue for a lot of illnesses is not having the right nutrition to be able to fight off any issues that come up. Chicken starving was definitely a thing, but so was just chickens getting sick in the winter and not having the abilities to fight it off because their immune system was compromised. Everyone has their own philosophies and I respect that, but I think if we have the ability to take care of our animals now and not let them go hungry, we should do our very best to prevent that. I'm going to give you the basics of what your chicken needs to eat and why it is that they need to eat that. Because if you know what needs to go into their diet for them to be healthy, you're not going to be tied to these feed bags anymore and you can mix your own and grow your own without worries. The majority of your chicken's diet should be carbs and crude fiber. I know when you buy your bags of chicken feed, you're looking at the protein content and you've began to associate that a higher protein content means a more expensive bag of feed. So if you're going to grow your own feed, let's increase the protein. If your chicken gets too much protein, the kidneys take that out, but over months and months of too much protein, that is going to cause failure. So upping the protein is not a good idea. Carbs are energy, and your chicken needs about 300 calories a day. The part that your chicken can digest is a carb, and the part that they can't is called a crude fiber. And that crude fiber is just as important as the carb because that is what moves everything through your chicken's body so that way they don't have any blockages. Corn, barley, oats, rye, wheat, millet, and sorghum are great sources of this. Over the next few minutes, you're probably going to notice that there's quite a bit of overlap between the ingredients. And this overlap is why you're gonna see more of that ingredient in your feed. Some ingredients are just naturally well-balanced for chickens. Just remember that carbs should be the majority of your chicken's diet. Crude fiber is a smaller portion, but it's just as important. Moving on to fatty acids. These fatty acids are what makes it possible for your chicken's body to digest all of the nutrients and vitamins and minerals that you're giving them. Without fatty acids, it's totally possible for your chicken to have a stomach full of all the nutrients they need and still be malnourished because they have no way of taking it in. Animal fats are much easier for them to absorb, but plant fats are completely valid. Animal-based fats are typically more expensive in commercial feed, but lucky for you, they're usually easier to source when you're doing it yourself. Good sources of fatty acids include tallow, lard, butter, seed oils, oats, buckwheat, corn, barley, flaxseed, camelina, fish oil, and sunflower seeds. Next up is protein. Chickens need protein to grow larger and put on that meat. They also need it for laying eggs, making feathers, and for their overall health. It's best practice to give your chickens a little extra protein when they're going through a molt to help them build up that keratin. And laying hens are really in need of it because each egg contains five to eight grams of protein, which is coming straight from her body. So she needs at least 15 grams of protein per day to lay the eggs and maintain her health. Insects, meat, fish meal, bone meal, soybean meal, canola meal, or corn meal are great sources of protein but it's important for you to know that there's not a single ingredient available that has all 20 of the necessary amino acids that your chicken needs. 
20 is kind of a big number, but on the bright side, your chickens only need 10 amino acids in their feed source, so that way they can use those 10 to create the other 10, totaling the necessary 20. This video could get extremely long and complicated if I wanted to get into the specifics of that. Just know that having a diversified diet is best for chickens and people. Anyway, getting this 10 to 20 amino acids is exactly why we mix up their feed and put in a blend of grains instead of just one kind. I want to be really clear that it's not just about the protein, it's also about those amino acids. Meat birds need about 23% of their diet to be protein, while laying hens need 17 to 18%, and occasionally that will jump up to like 19 or 20% when they're going through a severe molt. Also, it's a bit niche, but I want to mention that parsley is a surprisingly good source of protein. One single cup of chopped parsley is only 22 calories, but it's almost two full grams of protein. That one cup also has almost a half gram of fat. Parsley is kind of a surprise, and it's really helpful for your protein, your fat, and your leafy greens. Next up are your fancy rocks, aka minerals. Chickens need minerals for growing and maintaining their bones, making eggshells, electrolyte balance, and to avoid any illnesses or deficiencies. If your chickens are free ranging or on pasture, they're gonna have some access to minerals already. They'll pick up some of these in the form of grit. They need copper, iodine, iron, selenic, zinc, calcium, sodium, phosphorus, and potassium. They can get this from crushed oyster shells, meat, fish, bone meal, eggshells, and ashes. Vitamins are the last piece of the puzzle. All of those carbs, fats, and protein that we just talked about can only be absorbed by the chicken's body if they have the vitamins they need. Your chickens can store some of these vitamins in their body for a while, but some of them cannot be stored and because of that they need new sources of it every single day. Your flock needs vitamins A, C, D, E, K, and B complex, which is B1, B12, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9, and B12. You'll find these vitamins in leafy greens, vegetables, grains, seeds, fruits, legumes, fish meal, and bone meal. And sometimes your chickens will pull this right from the soil. I've already done a lot of this analyzing and math for you, but feel free to go back through some of those old slides and pick and choose which ingredients are the easiest for you to get a hold of. For example, my area grows a lot of canola, but we have almost no soybeans. Just make sure your swapped ingredients have similar nutritional values. The formula I'm using today is 30% corn, 30% wheat, 20% peas, 10% oats, 8% fish meal, and 2% fresh greens. Now you know how to mix your own feed, so what exactly do you need for your flock? Each hen or breeding rooster is going to eat about 91.25 pounds per year. Each heritage breed meat bird is going to eat about 22 pounds in their lifetime, while Cornish crosses will eat about 15 pounds in their lifetime. So if you have 9 hens and a rooster, which is 10 chickens, you're going to need about 912 pounds of feed per year. And if you like eating one chicken dinner per year, that's about 52 meat birds. So 52 heritage breed meat birds are going to need a little over 1,100 pounds of feed, while 52 Cornish crosses are going to need around 780 pounds of feed. I'm going to use that flock of 10 example for the next little bit of this video, but I promise near the end I will loop back around and show you all of the meat bird calculations. So to make corn 30% of the diet, you're going to need 270 pounds of corn, which is about 360 ears to feed your 10 chickens for the year. If you're a row cropper, that is four 56 foot long rows, and this assumes that each plant in the row is planted eight inches apart and each row is two and a half feet wide. If you prefer the really intensive square foot gardening method, if you're a square foot gardener who packs your plants in really tightly, you're only gonna need a nine by 10 square. And this assumes four plants per square foot. To make wheat 30% of the diet, you need 270 pounds of wheat to feed your 10 chickens for the year. And you're gonna get somewhere between five to 12 pounds of wheat per 100 square feet. Assuming that you can get eight pounds per 100 square feet, you're gonna need 3000 square feet to feed your 10 chickens. That's a square of about 55 feet by 55 feet. This giant difference in space needed between corn and wheat is why corn is usually the leading ingredient in your commercial feeds. Corn is ridiculously efficient and I don't think we appreciate it enough. Next up are peas, which are gonna take up 20% of the diet and you're gonna need about 180 pounds of peas to feed your 10 chickens for the year. If you're planting these in a row, you need 10 51 foot long rows or a 510 foot long row. If you wanna use field peas, which are probably the easier option here, then you need 2,000 square feet, which is about a 40 by 50 square foot plot. Also, it's really important for me to add that I am only including the peas in your chicken's diet here. This does not include the whole plant. If you're letting your chicken eat the whole plant, there's going to be so much more food for them. Next up, we're going to make oats 10% of the diet, and they're going to need 91 pounds of feed for the 10 chickens. You can expect 1 to 4 tons of oats per acre. 
For this example, we'll assume 2.5 tons per acre. To get those 91 pounds of oats, you need a 780 square foot space. That's about a 20 by 40 square foot plot. And again, I'm not including the stalk in these calculations. This is just the berries. I'm rounding down for extra safety. I think fish meal is the most complicated part of this equation. Fish meal or its equivalent should make up about 8% of your chicken's diet. So if you're feeding 10 chickens, you need about 280 pounds of raw fish or 90 pounds of fish meal powder. If you didn't know already, fish meal is taking a raw fish, drying it out, completely dehydrating it, and then crushing it up into a powder. Removing all that extra moisture is how it ends up being four times lighter than the raw fish equivalent. Fish meal is pretty easy for you to replace with other animal products like bone meal or fresh meat. But please remember that fish meal is about 65% protein or higher and about 10% fat. The fat content in this is just as important as the protein. So if you want to replace fish meal, use something that is really high in protein and also has at least 10% fat. You can farm your own fish, go fishing, go hunting, or even pick up some roadkill to take care of this need. You can also feed your chickens the fat off of any livestock you raise and harvest on your property. Grain finished beef and most kinds of hogs are going to be an excellent source of fat. If you want to farm your own fish, it usually takes about one pound of feed to grow one pound of fish. Sometimes that will go up to two and a half pounds of feed to make one pound of fish. This is by far the most efficient feed to meat ratio out there. Last up is fresh greens, which should make up 2% of your flock's diet. To meet this need, you need 18.3 pounds of fresh greens for your 10 chickens for the year. The cool thing about fresh greens is that they are quick growing and most of them are ready in 30 to 60 days, so you can use the same plot two, three, four, or sometimes even five times in a season. And a lot of your fresh greens will do better in the shoulder seasons like spring and fall when it's cooler. This is especially true if you live in the southern states. If you're like me, you probably haven't weighed your greens very often, so here's a good visual for you. Each chicken needs 1.83 pounds of fresh greens each year, which is almost two pounds. To make up that almost two pounds, you can use nine large stalks of kale, or 18 cups of spinach, or four cups of lettuce, or four cups of arugula. And of course you can mix and match this, but I'm just using those specifics so that way it's easy for you to visualize about how much that is. So to grow this 18 pounds of fresh greens, you're going to need a 6 by 3 garden bed, which is 18 square feet. So now let's add all this up together. It takes about 5,388 square feet to grow enough food for 10 chickens for the year. I know that's not exactly easy to picture, so try and take your home or your apartment size and then divide or multiply that, whatever you need to do, to get up to that 5,388 square feet. I could fit three of my houses in that space. If you're good at visualizing acreage, that's just over a tenth of an acre. Now I promised you I was going to come back and talk about those meat birds again and what they need. 52 Cornish crosses, which is again, one bird per week for the year, will need 46,055 square feet. That is about one acre. Your heritage breed meat chickens will take longer to grow up and because of that, they're going to eat more food. So they're going to need 67,549 square feet. That is about one and a half acres. So now you know how to grow your own feed, but how much is it going to cost you if you go through all the trouble of growing the feed yourself? I'm going to use trueleafmarket.com to show you the prices because that is a place that ships all across the country. So this is the absolute most you would pay for these seeds. If you can find a local co-op, you might be able to get them even cheaper. So this is the absolute most you would pay because at the worst case scenario, you could order from True Leaf Market. And I would not consider that the worst case scenario, but you get what I'm saying. So anyway, I did all the math on this and you're going to need about 40 seeds to feed one chicken per year if you use those seeds to grow more corn. True Leaf Market offers 7,000 corn seeds for $17.24. So sticking to our flock of 10 example, it's going to cost you 98 cents to feed your chickens their corn for the year. Next up is wheat. You're going to need almost a pound of seeds to feed your one chicken for the year and it costs $101 for 35 pounds of wheat berry seeds. So it's going to cost you $26 to buy the seeds for your 10 chickens. Next up, I'm going with the Austrian field pea. It costs $8.21 per pound, and you need 0.4 pounds to feed one chicken for the year. This means it costs $3.20 per year to feed your 10 chickens. I'm using Montezuma oat seeds for this next one. You need almost 2,000 seeds to feed one chicken for the year, and it is $27.55 to get 75,000 seeds. 
This means it's going to cost $7.16 per year to feed your 10 chickens. The fish meal is where things get really complicated for me. I'm not going to calculate this as if you're farming the fish because that gets so unbelievably complicated and I don't want to take this video and make it too long. This part could easily be free, especially if you have a pond on your property or you're picking up roadkill or you've got a lot of leftovers from when you go hunting. But in my state, it's $31 for a fishing license and $18 for a hunting license for residents. So I'm just going to say $50 total here. You can absolutely calculate this for yourself because you're going to know your situation way better than I will. Lastly, I'm going to use this extremely handy leafy green seed assortment pack that comes from Mountain Valley Seed Co. It is for sale on trueleafmarket.com. This packet has seven varieties, so that way your chickens will have a very diverse diet here. And these look so good, I would definitely be stealing a bite here and there too. Anyway, it is $11.65 for 84,000 seeds, and you only need 20 seeds per chicken, which means it's going to cost you 27 cents per year to feed your 10 chickens on these leafy greens. So what's the total cost to grow feed for your 10 chickens? It's going to be about $37.61 to buy the seeds for your first year. That is the cost of the seeds for the first year. That is not the bulk price. I will show you that in a minute. And in total, it's gonna to be about $87.61 if you are hunting and fishing for the bone and fish meal and you are using your fishing and hunting licenses. Your total upfront cost to buy all of these seeds is actually gonna be $165.74. And some of those seed packs will actually get you through your second and third year of growing. What about seed saving? Seed saving is so ridiculously underrated because every single year that you are seed saving, you are slowly acclimating those seeds and those plants to be better suited for your area. They're going to put up with your temperatures and your moisture and your humidity and whatever crazy disasters that you usually have in your area so much better because they've been acclimated to it. Plus, seed saving is a great way to save money and you are going to get a great return on whatever you put back. So for example, each ear of corn has about 800 kernels, aka seeds. So every single ear of corn that you set back could be another 800 plants for next year. Depending on your variety, each wheat plant could give you around 100 berries, which is 100 new plants. Meanwhile, each oat and pea plant will give you about 48 peas and oats, so that is 48 new plants each. So at the bare minimum, you are going to get a 48 times return. Planting just an extra 1 50th of each crop for the purpose of seed saving will take care of your needs for the entire next year. Basically for every 50 plants that you plant for your chickens this year, just put one aside for next year. Going back to that 10 chicken example, a 5,388 square foot garden will need about 108 square feet of space for the purpose of seed saving. Your bathroom might be larger than 108 square feet. So just to recap, the total cost to grow feed for your chickens is $37.61 for 10 laying chickens for the year, or it's $324 for 52 Cornish crosses, or $471.51 for 52 heritage breed meat chickens. And your second year on will be completely free if you go through the trouble of seed saving. Of course your labor is not free, but I think you'll probably find a lot of enjoyment in raising your own food and it'll probably feel a lot like a hobby. That's not to say it's not hard work, but I do think it has the potential to be really enjoyable if you let it. Hey, thanks for sticking around this long. If you like this video, please let me know. This took a long time to put together and I'm considering doing another one for rabbits, but that all depends on if you care that much. So let me know and thank you so much for being here.